Xbox, why didn't you put these games on your platform? Like your current platform? These games have got to be on there. Please put them on there. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today, we're going to be talking about like three games that Xbox really needs to port on over. I don't know what in the world they waiting for. They need to get these things ported like immediately. Per my perspective, they need to get these on there immediately. The first one, a classic. A, a super classic. In 2004, this game had released. It's called X Men Legends. Now, the plot is pretty simple. You know, one, you're a mutant, obviously. I mean, you wouldn't definitely be a human being going around, you know, just pew, 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 pewing, just, you know, random like sentinels or whatever trying to get to Magneto. But no, you start off as a young mutant, Allison Cressmere. You're in New York. Boom, your powers erupt, and in come the X Men. You play as Wolverine, Cyclops later on, and then the rest of the whole entire team but basically you know the main character is Allison Cressmere along with the rest of the mutants but technically it's technically all about Allison in the first like the first at, like first hour of the game I want to say but anyway it's a top-down kind of role-playing game you have your four squadron members whether they be from Wolverine to Rogue Jane Grey and they all come with their special ultimates I don't know if it was just the ultimates or was it just getting into more of the lore of the X-Men but the the game was just great for its time around 2004 on Xbox I played a person on Xbox it came out on I believe PlayStation GameCube I also believe but the game itself was was great it got you into a little linear pathways because back then like everything wasn't all open world as it is today of course you have your linear games but this game right here really dug into the whole entire story and like you know top-down gameplay that you really had to get yourself immersed in and also a couple of environmental puzzles but it wasn't anything really too deep it was like use your psychic powers to make a psychic bridge or magma to make a magma bridge or ice bridge things like that you know like environmentally wise and of course they gave you a little bit of in-depth into the story and what it was going on you know your fight against the sentinels and then eventually spoiler if you haven't seen it magneto coming out of you know nowhere once like you take down the arbiter that he's on and then he gets set free the next you know you have to go against the brotherhood of evil mutants and you have to go against the sentinels humanity all the kind of stuff and then back and forth xavier gets <sighs> It's a whole bunch of plot lines and they honestly could have made it into a movie if they, you know, really wanted to invest in it. But honestly, the whole entire game itself needs to be ported over. Cheat codes and all. And if not that, then you know, X-Men Legends 2, possibly? But honestly, Xbox, you need to port this over immediately. You did a disservice by not porting it over. Honestly, I don't know what you were thinking. You could have definitely did more. Could have made a couple bucks. Yeah, a couple bucks. You put it over X-Men Legends, but that's not the only one that you dropped the bag on. The next is The Hobbit. Now, if you know The Hobbit, you know, of course, it was a series of books made by, you know, Tolkien, and they have a show, and of course, like about six movies for the whole entire franchise, and the three that you've probably seen for The Hobbit. However, originally, like in 2005, The Hobbit dropped. Of course, it's you and Bibble Baggins, and it's telling you the whole entire story from the book. Maybe a couple, you know, artistic liberties were taken here and there throughout the whole entire story, but for the most part, it would be, you know, Baggins, you being in the Shire, you beating up with the 12 doors, they wreck up your house, you gotta get some supplies, once you get supplies and everything, you eat the dwarves, you set on out for, you know, the lonely mountain, big old lonely mountain, and we know what's in the lonely mountain, mm -hmm. he who shall not be named, not Voldemort, but Smaug, Smaug, but once you go on throughout your whole entire journey of your ups and downs, you're going through the goblin, you know, whole entire thing, you're saving the dwarves, you guys making your escape, going on out, and then you know going through Mirkwood. Mirkwood was a really fun chapter that's when you got the ring and you really had to use that and you had like a little tiny gauge a little timer in order for you to actually be you know invisible and it tested you you know from going from one point to the other however the elves were kind of sensitive and they could be like hold on what was that what was that and if you got caught it was pretty much over and you got thrown in jail but the whole entire premise of the game was just you exploring adventuring and collecting your little loops and throwing rocks it was a cute time it was a fun time and i think that that game should really be ported over i mean not only would you be getting a pretty good story from it you would definitely would be getting you know a little experience right there you know let everyone experience that nostalgia from the original hobbit game that you actually put out and honestly it was genuinely good for its time for its time of course it was good of course there can be improvements maybe you can remaster it a little bit you know give it a little bit of in-depth but i guess you could also put the lego version of it and you'd be pretty good you know 
because you know it's Legos. You can't really go wrong. Nah, you can't go wrong with Legos. So there is that. But honestly, Xbox, you need to port over the Hobbit. I mean, it'll probably just take you about two or three seconds, probably one gigabyte of data to put it on your whole entire store. Come on. I mean. For nostalgia's sake, you really should just go ahead and port that one on. And last but not least, <laughs> Mortal Kombat Shaolin Showdown. I mean, Shaolin Monks. See, I'm getting Shaolin Showdown mixed up with the Shingong Wu. You see, <sighs> granted, they were around the same time, but I digress. That game, compared to all the other games at the time, was really bloody, not including the original arcade game of Mortal Kombat, but this right here actually put you in the Mortal Kombat universe and it gave you control and agency over Kung Lao, Liu Kang, of course, and then you had like your two, you know, ghost characters, your, your uh, like, what are they called? We're gonna, we're gonna call them implant characters. One was Sub-Zero that represented Kung Lao, if you want to go down his story, and then the other one represented Scorpion, which was Liu Kang. Technically, so you know they had to technically, you know, fill in the story by not getting rid of the characters, and you also have to go up against these characters in the game. So keep that in mind. So yeah, yeah. And with any type of Mortal Kombat game, you have combat, and of course you have fatalities. But not only is there fatalities, there's mortalities, and when you just take out a whole entire like one or two or three enemies in the area, depending on the ability, and they gave you multiple like fatality things. All I had to do was push a button, it's like Push, finish him. And then you got the whole entire thing in the background into your code. And then it, it got rid of one person in a cool way or got rid of multiple, whatever. And then you had brutality. Brutality. It was, it was your ultimate move. It's like, you know, like how Kill Bill, everything went red uh, for Beatrix. You go into that mode brutality. You just go into like Super Saiyan. You just chop up everybody. Like ass fly things flying everywhere. <laughs> a fun time. A fun time. Incredible. But not only is it incredible, it gave you a story. Just like any game should. And then it also gives you, you know, I would, I would say if you didn't have anyone to play with this game was technically to your detriment because like you needed a second person to also be efficient and also to get the other little secret little icons around that would unlock concept art and also characters. Thank God it didn't like put moves behind there. Could you imagine like going into the whole entire world and you only have like about four moves to your name and that's pretty much it. And I mean they gave you like certain moves so you can you know progress the whole entire game and unlock certain areas once you reach maturity throughout the whole entire game and progression is good for you but the story of course as you know you're Liu Kang or Kung Lao going up against Shang Tsung and the minions of Outworld and also invertedly Shao Kahn because he wants to take over everything you know how Shao Kahn is Shao Kahn don't give one <clears throat> about anyone or their feelings and he's going to take over you your house and take your cookies he's known for that absolutely known for that but not only is he going to be taking your cookies he's going to be taking your whole entire world so look at adenia here we are it's not good but it is what it is they were wrong to do that to what they messed up sindale they really did Moving on, but still, that whole entire story is really fun. You have your classic Mortal Kombat, you know, we're gonna save Earth Realm plot, and then you have a linear story, which was pretty fun for its time back in 2005, I believe is when it released in North America. But, oh gosh, was it great? was it a great game? And that was back when like, what was it called? Like the, the website where you rented games and all that kind of stuff for like $7. It was like, get this membership and you can rent la 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 la. Of course, I'm pretty sure that game renting system no longer applies anymore. But back then, it was definitely something that people considered, not me, because I was like, I want to rent Jack Squat. I don't want to keep it. But of course you could have kept it, you know, afterwards you paid for it if you're paying a rental, like a rental fee for it. Yeah, you could definitely keep it if you paid the price, you know, to keep it. Such a great time, such a great time. <laughs> it was so weird, but great. But all in all, X-Men Legends, The Hobbit, and Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks are the three games you need to port on over. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who believes in this right here. I'm pretty sure the consensus would definitely give you a couple of people here and there that be like, you know, go ahead and push it on through. You got Dragon Age Origins on there and you got Dragon Age 2 and it took you a while to port those on. So here's my consideration. Um, you know, my proposal, take this into consideration. Please port these three games on over. It'll be fun for everyone. It'll be fun on the button. And an all in all enjoyable experience. I'm not asking you to do anything other than that. You actually poured it over whacked. And that game literally had you hitting somebody with a baseball bat until they went. 
You have no excuses, Microsoft. You have three days to respond. Please do what is right. And again, thank you for actually watching this video. Um, if you've made it this far through, I hope <laughs> you also agree with my opinions. And if not, it's cool. It's all right. But if you did enjoy these games, you think they're actually pretty cool, please tell me in the comments if you actually enjoyed them or not. Or if you just simply, you know, think the games are trash, which is pretty valid. These games are really, really old. No one ain't really looking for them. Like they were looking for like, you know, Star Wars, The Republic. But I heard that was a pretty good game. So, I mean, it wasn't bad. But thank you for watching and I will see you next time.